Electrochemical machining processes are a group of non-traditional or non-conventional machining processes which rely on the removal of workpiece atoms by the use of electrical energy in combination with chemical reactions. These processes are the reverse of electroplating also called galvanic coating or deposition process. The work material must be a conductor in the electrochemical machining process. Electrochemical machining removes metal from an electrically conductive workpiece by anodic dissolution in which the shape of the workpiece is obtained by a formed electrode in close proximity to but separated from the work by a rapidly flowing electrolyte as shown in the figure. The material removal is in accordance with Faraday's laws of electrolysis which will be discussed shortly. Gusev introduced the first patent on ECM in 1929 and the first significant development occurred in 1950s when the process was used for machining high strength and heat resistant alloys. A combination of electricity and chemical reactions is used to perform the reverse of electroplating. Electrolysis occurs on passing current between two electrodes dipped in electrolyte solution. The electrolyte and the electrode together form an electrolytic cell. The reactions at the anode and the cathode are referred to as anodic and cathodic reactions respectively. During ECM, anodic dissolution takes place. The amount of metal dissolved or removed by machining in ECM or deposited in electroplating is calculated from Faraday's laws of electrolysis. The first law states that the amount of mass dissolved or removed by machining M is directly proportional to the amount of electricity that is M directly proportional to I T where I is the current and T is the time. Thus the product I T gives the electric charge supplied. According to the second law if the same amount of electricity is supplied to different materials then the amount of mass of a given material is proportional to the material's equivalent weight which is the ratio of its atomic weight and valency. The work and the tool are maintained at some gap with the electrolyte flowing between the two. The shape of the cavity is determined by the tool. The cavity produced is the female mating image of the tool shape. The shape tool which may be either solid or tubular form is generally made of brass, copper, bronze or stainless steel. The tool is advanced at a given feed rate depending on the depleting rate of the workpiece. The electrolyte which is usually a solution of inorganic salt like sodium chloride, potassium chloride etc. provides a highly conductive medium for the flow of electricity between the electrodes. Alternating current is not used in ECM. Direct current with low voltage but high current density is employed. The electrolyte which is forced at high velocity between the electrodes expedites the mass transfer and also facilitates the removal of reaction byproducts and prevents any deposition on the cathode. Here let us discuss the example of machining of iron in sodium chloride electrolyte to understand the material removal process. During ECM, Several reactions occur at and near the electrodes that is anode and cathode and also in the electrolyte. When an EMF is applied across the electrodes, electrolyte dissociation and NaCl dissolution leads to formation of anions and cations as shown here. As the potential difference is applied, the positive ions start moving towards the cathode which is the tool and the negative ions start moving towards the anode that is the work. At the anode, iron atoms release into the electrolyte losing two electrons at the anode. At the cathode, hydrogen gas is released. The iron ions react with hydroxyl ions and further with water and oxygen to form hydroxides. Also, reactions between the iron and chlorine ions may lead to formation of chlorides. These products of anodic dissolution called sludge are removed by the 
electrolyte. As already discussed, a shape tool is used to produce its inverse shape in the product. To achieve this, an allowance in the tool must be provided to compensate for the inter-electrode gap. According to Faraday's law, the volume of material removed is equal to the product of the current and time with a constant called specific removal rate that depends on the atomic weight, valency and density of the work material. To Ohm's law, current is equal to voltage upon resistance. In ECM, the resistance is equal to the product of gap between the electrodes and the resistivity of the electrolyte divided by the surface area between the work and the tool in the working frontal gap. Substituting the value of R from equation 3 into equation 2, we get the expression for machining current in ECM. We can then replace current in equation 1 and rearrange to arrive at equation 6. Now, the ratio V upon AT is equal to the feed rate or the rate of advancement of the tool. Thus, we arrive at the expression of feed rate as given by equation 8. Let us apply the equation we derived to solve a problem. It says ECM is used to machine a hole into a 12 mm thick aluminium plate. The hole has a rectangular cross section of 15 mm by 20 mm. The current during the operation is 1000 ampere. The value of specific removal rate for aluminium is given as 0.0344 millimeter cube per ampere second. The material removal efficiency is 95%. So let us start by finding the frontal area of the electrode. It comes out to be 300 mm square. Under ideal conditions, the feed rate at 1000 ampere would be calculated as Fr is equal to C into I upon A which comes out to be 0.1147 millimeter per second. However, in this question, the material removal efficiency is 95%. Hence, the actual feed rate is equal to 0.1089 mm per second. The time required to machine would be equal to the thickness divided by the feed rate. Thus, the machining time is equal to 110.19 second or 1.84 minute. ECM equipment has four main components namely the feed control system, electrolyte supply system, power supply unit and the workpiece holding device. All these major groups have their own subcomponents as shown in the figure. The electrolyte supply system supplies the electrolyte solution at a given rate, pressure and temperature. Facilities for electrolyte filtration, temperature control and sludge removal are also included. The power supply drives the machining current at constant DC which may be continuous or pulsed voltage. The feed control system is responsible for feeding the tool at a constant rate during equilibrium machining. The pumping of high pressure electrolyte into the narrow machining gap gives rise to large forces acting on the tool and the workpiece. Hence, the work holding devices are required to rigidly hold the work in place during machining. The electrolyte has several functions during ECM. It requires to create conditions for anodic dissolution of workpiece, ensuring a uniform and high speed anodic dissolution. It should avoid the formation of passive film on anodic surface. To achieve this, electrolytes containing anions like chloride, SO4, NO3, ClO3 and 
hydroxyl ions are often recommended. No deposit should form on the cathode surface so that the cathode shape remains unchanged during the process. The electrolyte should be able to conduct the machining current. For this, the electrolyte must have a high electrical conductivity and low viscosity to reduce the power loss due to electrolyte resistance and heat generation and also ensure good flow conditions in the extremely narrow inter electrode cap. It should also be able to carry away the heat generated by the machining process to maintain a constant temperature in the machining region. It should also be safe, non-toxic and less erosive to the machine body. It should maintain its stable ingredients and pH value during the machining period. There should be small variation in its conductivity and viscosity due to the temperature rise. It is also preferable if the electrolyte is inexpensive and easily available. ECM can be classified on the basis of the current used into continuous current or traditional ECM and pulsed current ECM. Pulsed ECM has recently shown the potential to improve accuracies and surface finish than traditional ECM. In pulsed ECM, high current densities greater than around 100 ampere per centimeter square are pulsed on for small durations of the order of 1 millisecond and pulsed off for intervals of the order of 10 millisecond. The relaxation interval or pulse off time permits reaction byproducts to be removed from the inter electrode gap at low electrolyte flow rates without electrolytic deposition on the ECM tool. As a result, high current densities can be used at small inter electrode distances, improving both removal rates and precision. Because pulsed ECM allows low electrolyte flow rates, it has been proposed to remove recast layer from the surface of dyes produced by electric discharge machining. Some efforts are being made to integrate this technology into EDM platforms. Pulsed currents have also been used in electrochemical micro machining. ECM can also be classified into variants based on the modifications made to suit a given application. Some of these variants are mentioned here. First we have the traditional ECM. Then we have electrochemical micro machining. We also have electrochemical hole machining, electrochemical polishing, electrochemical grinding and electrochemical deburring. Let us now discuss a few advantages of ECM process. There is no tool wear in the tool because there is no contact between the tool and the workpiece. Machining is done at low voltages compared to other processes with high metal removal rates. Very small dimensions up to 0.05 mm can be controlled. Complicated profiles can be machined easily in a single operation. Because of the low temperature developed, no thermal damage occurs to the workpiece structure. Hard conductive materials can be machined easily. The surface finish can be maintained at 0.1 to 1.25 micrometer RA. The labor requirements are low in case of electrochemical machining. ECM also has some limitations or disadvantages, some of which are discussed here. A huge amount of energy is consumed. For example, the machining of steel by ECM requires about 100 times the energy required for turning or drilling steel. Metal removal rates are slow compared with conventional methods. ECM can only be applied to electrically conductive workpiece materials. There are difficulties in safely removing and disposing of the explosive hydrogen gas produced during the machining process. 
the workpiece needs to be cleaned and oiled immediately after machining as the workpiece may be susceptible to oxidation when exposed to the atmosphere. There are difficulties with handling the electrolyte which may attack the equipment. It is not easy to duplicate the shape of the tool electrode in the workpiece with a high degree of accuracy because of the side machining effect. The process can't produce sharp internal or external edges. The pumping of high pressure electrolyte into the narrow gap gives rise to large forces acting on the tool and the workpiece. Because of its high capital cost, ECM is only suitable for mass production work. Thank you for watching. You may watch other videos on the channel by clicking on the thumbnails. Like, share and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, Comment below your feedback and suggestions.